Hi, I'm Maya Matarik. I'm a professor of computer science and neuroscience at the University of Southern California. I'm also the director of the USC Center for Robotics and Embedded Systems. One of the things that's really exciting about robotics today is that it's moving from building your car and these days actually uh, vacuuming your floor because you can buy a vacuum cleaner robot nowadays for $200 and about 2 million people have so it's a popular robot whether you know it's a robot or not is that robots are actually moving into one's everyday life. And, so and this is called the Create. It's very much like the Roomba except it doesn't vacuum. It moves around and it's programmable and it lets anybody program it to do all sorts of things that robots can do. And what my book does is help you to learn how you can program a robot like the Create or any other robot. So I wrote this book for several reasons. Uh, the main reason is that I would really like to make robotics accessible to everybody who is interested. And I think right now there are a lot of popular books that don't really teach the fundamentals of robotics. And then there are a lot of textbooks at the college level which are not really accessible to people, um, let's say, in the K-12 through education, teachers, as well as students and hobbyists. And so I wanted to fill that gap. I wanted to make a book that's fun to read for just about anybody who wants to get started in robotics. So I got interested in robotics actually quite late, by the time I was in graduate school. Most people start earlier, but it's never too late. Um, and I got interested because I got interested in how the brain works. And one way you can experiment about how the brain works is to create brains. And, and I worked first on a robot that was sort of like a rat in its brain. I navigated around the maze like a rat, and that's hard to do. And then I got interested in teams of robots and groups and their social behavior. And, and robots are social animals, if you will. They're social creatures. And so we looked at ways in which they could communicate and coordinate their action and do things in a group, such as anything from playing soccer to helping people who are stuck in, a, let's say, a building after an earthquake. But then most recently, I got really interested in building robots and creating brains for robots um, that would help them help people and especially people who need help. So whether we're talking about special education or we're talking about people who have suffered from stroke or whether we're talking about um, kids with autism spectrum disorder or maybe attention deficit, there are a lot of populations that can benefit from really creative social technologies. And robots can actually be creative social partners. Help kids in school, patients in the hospital, and people in their everyday homes. And that appeals to a lot of different kinds of scientists and researchers and students. And so where it used to be that traditional robotics was done by traditional engineers, uh, these days you see all sorts of non-traditional people. So a lot of women, a lot of diversity among the students doing robotics. And I think that's really exciting because what motivates us is what kind of difference these systems and this technology can do.